so I teach at Manor Haven Elementary School, which is in Port Washington, which is on Long Island, which is in New York. Okay. You're, you're Michael Hines's district? Yes. Michael, okay. Yep. Yeah, we are familiar with that. Um, awesome. So what, what grades, what grade levels do you teach? Is it, is it all elementary or is it specific grade? All elementary. All so K-5. Yep. And there's um, and five, five elementary schools in the school district. One of them has a pre-K, but not ours. Okay. Um, so before the pandemic started, every, every teacher, every PE teacher especially, had always had experiences and challenges uh, figuring out what the best way to get kids active and moving forward. What were some of those challenges that you experienced prior to the pandemic? So prior to the pandemic, it would probably be um, any challenges that we faced would have been along the lines of uh, budgetary. There were things that we wanted to do, and, and there was a, we, have a, we have a very, very generous budget for physical education, but there were things that we wanted to do that couldn't be So we um, did a lot of grant writing in order to bring money in that way. And so that was that was a challenge, but it was it was helpful when we were able to get the grants. Um, some some equity type situations. So our elementary schools did not have any before school or after school clubs, and we wanted to start some. But then the problem was that kids that normally would take the bus to school and didn't have transportation, then they would be excluded. So that was a big hurdle that we never really did quite solve. Um, we were able to kind of work around it as best we could, but, you know, we, we were able to get a before school and an after school program, but then the, the children were dependent on um, either figuring out some kind of a carpool that wanted to go. So that was, that was a bit of a struggle. Um, it, it, not really too much else. You know, those are probably, I guess, I guess, and that all comes down to money, right? Yep. <laughs> the age old, the age old issue. Um so going into the pandemic, what was, walk me through kind of the pandemic timeline that you experienced, you know, starting off when it became clear that this, that COVID-19 was going to become a pandemic, what were some of the thoughts that went through your mind in the school district? Well, we had pretty much, so we, we were fully immersed in our gymnastics um, unit. So, you know, and we're starting to hear little rumors, oh, you know, there's this new virus going around and it's, you know, highly contagious, but it had not exploded yet. So, but we started thinking, it's like, well, we should, we should definitely have the kids starting to wash their hands before and after PE. And that was on March 12th. And then on March 12th, that's when the schools shut down. And we thought originally it was going to be for a long weekend and just be for the deep clean. And then right. that just, you know, week after week got added on. So it was, we knew something was coming. We knew it was bad, but we had no idea it was what it was. You know, and thinking, at, thinking now it's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I had these kids rolling and tumbling all over equipment and sweating everywhere and touching each other. And, and I thought if they wash their hands before and after, we're all, we're all set. But It'll that be good, was right? yep. so here we are. So that was right. Yeah. Just right up to March 12th. Okay, so you guys shut down on March 12th was when you guys, and, and so what was, what was the original plan that you were going to have going into online learning? Our original plan going into online learning was um, really, it was tough. Nobody really, we, there was no plan going into it. We sort of, you know, you've heard, I'm sure the expression, the build, flying the plane while, while you're building it or vice versa. Um, sort of figured it out as we went along. As a PE staff, we started out with putting asynchronous work out through our PE um, websites. And then when we realized that that wasn't the most efficient way of doing it, then we had to learn how to create Google Classrooms. And do we do one huge Google Classroom for the whole school or one for each grade level? Or So that kind of evolved over time. Um, we started out with only asynchronous work and activities that we provided for the kids for the first couple of months. And then that again evolved. So then the district started, you know, encouraging us to do live Google meets. Um, and this is all through the spring leading up to the summer. And by the time summer came, we were doing, I think, three live Google meets a week. And the rest of the time we were posting asynchronous work that the kids could do kind of on their own time. And we would just encourage them to try to get onto the Google classroom twice a week. 
um, vastly different from what we're doing, you know, this year. Yeah, right. So obviously from what I've heard a lot on, on Twitter, you know, I try to, I try to stay as engaged on Twitter as possible and try to, you know, hear what teachers are saying. A lot of what they were saying was that they were having problems at first getting kids to actually get into the online classes. A lot of kids were not showing up. Um, is that anything that you experienced at your district? Um, in the spring, it was, it was, um, we didn't get a whole lot of kids that would join in for PE. And since it was also new and we didn't know what their experiences were at home, you know, if they had lost a loved one, if their parents had lost a job, we pretty much so, you know, backed off and we just, the way we communicated to the families was, you know, we know these are rough times. If you can't get into the PE Google classroom, just see if you can, you know, get out and let your kids get outside a little bit, maybe play in the, the backyard and, and, you know, that type of stuff. So in the spring, there was a lot of flexibility. Um, there were no real hard requirements for the kids to sign in for PE. Um, but we did try to make activities that would be fun and engaging that they'd want to do. So, you know, we would have fun scavenger hunts when we were live. We did um, open field day. When field day time came, we did a virtual project basis. So we wanted to have some of those really big fun events that they were used to and do them virtually. And, and those were always, you know, very well attended. And you know, we used Flipgrid and that kept a lot of the kids engaged as well. So we found ways to get as many kids in as we could, but definitely not, you know, the majority of the students. Yeah. So going then into the summer, what was kind of the conversation that was going on at the district level of, okay, so clearly this is going to be a problem. This is going to be a global pandemic. We're going to experience these things for possibly years to come. Uh, what, what conversations occurred to try to transition uh, for the students in the fall? So I served on um, one of the reopening, the district-wide reopening committees, the instructional committee, and we were tasked with coming up with a model to use in a hybrid situation um, and also a fully virtual model. And then eventually, for the, then this was for elementary school. And so we met a lot over the summer and we had these discussions like how how if we do if we have to go back to hybrid how are we going to do it if we're fully virtual how are we going to do it so we really got into kind of the nuts and bolts of how it would be structured and eventually it turned into well elementary we're going to go back full in and then we had to figure out how we were going to do that with physical distancing and all of the protocols so that was one committee there was the district-wide protocol and safety committee so there were multiple committees that were meeting and they were, they had uh, teachers, power professionals, um, parents, administrators. So a good representation across the entire community serving on these different committees to come up with the best plan that we possibly could. And came September, elementary's phased in for a few weeks and then we ended up fully in. We've been fully in the whole year um, and the middle school and the high schools were hybrid up until they're they're starting to get middle and high school kids in. I think middle school might be fully in at this point, um, just at the very end of the school year. So, but there was a ton of planning. I've never had so many meetings. So you can ask my husband; he will tell you. <laughs> never so many meetings in my entire life as I had last. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I mean, I can I can imagine, or you know, I think I can imagine. I don't I don't know if I can actually imagine what that experience and uh, what I'm sure are the amount of meetings that you went through just trying to figure it out and like what are we going to do here because right. you guys didn't have like any pandemic guidelines right like there was no like from 1920 when the last pandemic happened like there was no okay well this is what we're going to do with PE so it was a lot of figuring it out as you guys went yes. along um in terms of your district so some teachers and some phys ed educators have kind of expressed that there was more of a focus on letting individual buildings, like individual schools design their own sort of programs for back to school, whether it was going to be full in person, whether it was going to be full, uh, you know, online, or if it was going to be a hybrid, um, as opposed to at a district level, making that decision for all of the buildings. What was the process uh, for your district? What was the protocol? Um, well, it was, it, 
everything was done district wide. So all elementary schools were going to be going full in. Um, we have one middle school and one high school. So they started out as hybrid. So it was it, it, all of those really big decisions were district wide. And then, you know, once you get down to the building levels, a lot of that they kept consistent as well. So for example, um, none of the elementary schools have had use of our gymnasiums this year. That large space is being used for different things at different schools, depending on what their needs are. So for example, our cafeteria is being used as a cafeteria so that the kids can be spread out while they're eating. So, um, but those were all pretty much so every building did these, the, the, the protocols pretty much so the same way. So that's interesting, so that makes sense. Um, so going into the hybrid classroom, what were, or I, I guess we should start with the online only classroom. What were some of the activities that you guys got together to do with the kids? And what were some of those activities that you found to be, I guess, the most successful? Um, we honestly, this year, we did not have to do too much. Um, we, we, you know, we were prepared to pivot. We created a lot of asynchronous work just in case, but for the most part, we were live face to face this year, but on those a couple occasions where we were teaching a class remotely, um, it was structured. So normally we meet the kids for 40 minutes for our online ones. We would meet them for 30 minutes. And we did, like I said, you know, there's always going to be the fitness things, you know, because those are very popular. Um, a lot of the PE teachers in the district would share their screen and do a lot of, you've seen them all over Twitter. They're great that this or that activities, the kids love them. Anything that Amazing. has any kind, of, mm -hmm, any kind of a theme that, you know, goes along with it, like a holiday theme, we would be able to use a lot of those. Um, a lot of a lot of work on just trying to make some kind of connection with them and and help to establish relationships. So I, I did spend a lot of time talking with the kids and just you know hey check in let me know how you're doing you know let's just um, see if we can work on something so we can identify our emotions the yoga type things breathing type things. Um, but honestly, the kids the kids this year when we did have to do do our uh, Google Meets most of the students came, you know, that we really didn't have a problem. You'd have a small handful of kids that would not show up for the meets. Um, for the most part, they really did. And they enjoyed it. And they, they liked being active. We would have some of them be the leaders. Okay, we're going to do a little Tabata warm up now. And, and you're going to be watching Billy and Sally. Nobody has those names anymore. But you're going to watch them and copy that, you know, so you, that type of stuff was, was a lot of fun for the kids. One of the one of the issues that I've also heard a lot um, in terms of now transitioning back into the full in-person was PE teachers specifically seeing a couple of concerning signs, whether it's, um, you know, being behind from a sensory perspective and a sensory development perspective, not meeting some of the critical milestones that you'd expect at certain age groups to hit. Um, some educators have expressed that they're behind. Um, some educators, uh, phys ed educators, as well as, you know, teachers and uh, other sorts of uh, educators, I guess, um, have expressed that there's some anxiety that they're seeing among the kids. Um, in particular, they seem to say that it's it tends to be in the older age groups as opposed to the younger age group. So I'm, I'm curious to see if you've experienced any of that specifically. Uh, I thought I would experience, I thought there would be a lot more of that when we went back in. Now, uh, I know a lot of schools, they, they're just barely going back face to face. And so our kids have not been out of school that long. They, they basically from March till September, and then they were back face to face. Um, I have not seen a huge increase in those areas, but we did have some students that came back that were fully virtual for most of the year. And what I am noticing with them is that the social piece is, is a struggle for them. You know, whereas the kids that have been here the whole time, they're, they're doing great socially, you know, they're able to play and work things out. And, and the kids that have just recently, the ones that have been out since last March for a year, they're struggling socially. That's what I'm seeing more than anything else. Okay. Absolutely. Um, Yes, socially, and but what I've noticed just over the years, I've been teaching for 31 years, the sensory, the gross motor, all of that stuff has been getting uh, weaker, 
over the years and kids are coming into school less and less able to do what they had been able to do when I first started teaching. So that that's just a general statement over the years that I've noticed. Okay. Kind of building onto that. Um, so you, you've seen the kind of decline in terms of some of the sensory developmental milestones over your 31 years of teaching. Mm -hmm. um, are there any, are there any, not to say necessarily a silver lining, but is there anything that you've gotten in, in that kind of brief period of time that you were either hybrid or online only that you think may actually benefit uh, going forward? Outdoor play, for sure. You know, when the kids can get outside and just play in all kinds of weather, we've done a lot of, we, since we haven't had a gym, we've been out. This is my big silver lining this year. We've been outside all year in rain and snow and ice and, and all of that stuff. And we have seen a uh, just the kids have just kids that were just like, I don't want to go outside. Oh, there's a raindrop. Now they're just like, we're going outside, right? You know, they're eager to be outside and just enjoying nature. And they're, they're learning how to navigate different surfaces and, and that kind of stuff. So, so that's, that's been a really big, a big silver lining for us. And then I think that a lot of the kids just in the neighborhoods now, um, they're maybe riding their bikes a little bit more or, you know, roller skating or skateboards and scooters and just taking walks with their families. And that's not necessarily something that happened pre-pandemic. 